Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. So in today's journey, we are starting at Redgate in the parish of Westmoreland. We are going to be traveling towards Savlamar. We are next going to be passing Watercrest. We are going to be passing Ferris as well as Paradise and Smithfield. We are heading into Savlamar. So sit back, relax and drive with me. First up, is it Miss or Mrs. Dulcy, darling, thanks a lot. Your kindness, it is really and truly appreciated. Enough respect. Now, if you were traveling to or from Montego Bay early yesterday morning, Thursday, February 24th, 2022, you would have experienced some delays. This is if you were traveling from maybe Westmoreland in the hills towards Montego Bay, or you were coming from Montego Bay in the hills, traveling towards Westmoreland. This delay was because the Ramble Main Road in the parish of Hanover, it was blocked. We are learning that residents, they used everything they could find, trees, old cars, etc. They used it to block the main road, the Ramble Main Road. They were demonstrating about the bad road condition at a nearby community named Chester Castle, also in the parish of Hanover. They reported that for years, the road has been in a deplorable condition and despite many promises, nothing has been done. The residents, they relented when they were addressed by the Member of Parliament for the area, Mr. Dave Brown. Now, Mr. Brown, he promised the residents that the situation, it would be addressed by tomorrow, Saturday, February 26, 2022. <laughs> Mr. Brown, Sir Brown, let's hope you deliver. Sir, let's hope you really do. Because this road is in a deplorable condition. Now, Gilly and Michelle at Gilly's Restaurant on Darling Street in Sablamar, big up on a nice clean self. <laughs> at Gilly's Restaurant, you know, for the persons who eat corn pork, at Gilly's Restaurant, this is where you get the best corn pork soup around town. If you go there for breakfast, you can also get aki and corn pork for breakfast. If you are in Sablamar, ensure that you check out Gilly's Restaurant. That is, if you eat pork. <laughs> because we know some people are going to burn you out and say, re, re, re. but listen to me. People are free to choose what they want to eat and what they don't want to eat. If somebody eat pork, it is not your business to burn them out. It is not affecting you. So who want to eat them pork? Make them eat it. So if you eat pork and you are in Savlamar, ensure that you check out Gilly's Restaurant. It's on Darling Street, Upper Darling Street. Now, in this next story, we are going to be going to the parish of Clarendon. Listen to this one. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. For the persons who are coming here, are you just come over here? And you are commenting that I take too long to reach to the point. We don't go change, you know. This is how we have been doing things from day one. We start from the first or from the beginning and then we come to the end. We don't rush what we are doing. Because at the end of the story, we want you to understand exactly what we are saying. We know what we done, your accent, then how did happen this or how that did go. We take our time, we develop our stories. And we explain it to you. Most of the videos we do is average about 18 minutes long. When we do a video, we carry all five, six, seven stories in it. It's not just one story we are gonna carry. So if you are so impatient, Miss Arifio, we take time and carry our story. So, like we say, we are going to the parish of Clarendon. Now, on Thursday, September 12, 2019, sometime in the evening, a man named Mr. David. Heath. He was 57 years old and he lived at Racecourse in the parish of Clarinda. David, he was shot and killed by hoodlums. It is said that at the time David was shot and killed, a relative of his was aligned to a rival in gang in the parish of Clarinda in the Racecourse area. This killing, the killing of David, it was said to be carried out by members of a gang named Bloods Gang. Take your time. And listen to me. <laughs> Just be patient. One month later, 
it is alleged that the hoodlums who were suspected to have shot and killed David Heath, they opened fire at another man in the same racecourse community. Two men were held by the police. They were placed on ID parade. These two men, they were positively identified. They were identified as one, Krishna Ramatar. He's popularly known as Dude. Now, Dude, he was 28 years old at the time. Dude was charged for the murder of David Heath. Krishna Ramatar, yeah, the same Krishna, popularly known as Dude, he was charged with another man named Akeem Mori. In this case, they were charged for the shooting incident that I told you about a while ago, where they shot at a man. Now, Akeem Mori, he was popularly known as Kimo, and he was 26 years old. So they were charged for the shooting incident. So, Krishna, he was charged for the murder of David Heath. And then, he was charged along with Akeem Mori for the shooting incident. They went to court and they were eventually granted bail in mid-2020. So they were now out of road. Krishna Ramatar, he has another brother named Kamar Ramatar. He's popularly known as Kaftan. Now, it is said that Krishna Ramatar and Akeem Mori, they are members of the Bloods gang. Kamar Ramatar, also members of the same gang. So, on November 20, 2020, remember we told you, you know, that Akim, popularly known as Kimo, he and Krishna Ramatar, they would have been granted bail. So, they were now out of street. So, on November 20, 2020, both Akim Mori and Kamar Ramatar, they were both riding on a motorcycle. When the two of them, they were shot off the motorcycle. They were shot and killed. You following me? <laughs> I hope you are following me. So, Akeem Mori, he was charged in a shooting incident and on bail. Kamar Ramatar, his brother's name is Krishna Ramatar. Krishna was charged for a murder, the murder of David Heath. So, in this incident, both Akeem and Kamar, they were shot and killed. Follow me now. On Monday, March 20, 2021, about 2.30 p.m., Hoodlums went to the Lasco Monogram outlet at Chapleton in the parish of Clarendon. They held up and robbed the staff and customers at this outlet. It was said at the time that they escaped with over 1.7 million Jamaican dollars in cash. They escaped in a waiting motor car. The police, they commenced investigation, remember? They were already investigating the murder of Kamar Ramatar and Akeem Mori. They picked up some men. One of these men, he was identified. That person, he was subsequently charged. He was charged in connection with the robbery at Chapleton. As also, he was charged for the double murder of Akeem Mori and Kamar Ramatar. Are you following me? Yeah, man. That man who was charged. And I keep referring to him as a man. But that person who was charged, his name is Michael Black. Michael Black, he is now 18 years old. No, we are talking about today. Michael Black is 18 years old. So at the time, he allegedly shot and killed Akeem Murray and Kamar Ramatar. You want to guess how old he was? He was 16 years old. At the time, he carried out the robbery at Chapleton, or he was a member of the gang who carried out the robbery. He was 17 years old. So, Michael Black, he was in police custody and he had been attending court. So yesterday, Thursday, February 24th, 2022, Michael Black, he went to the home circuit court in Kingston where he pleaded guilty. He pleaded guilty for the robbery at Chapleton. He also pleaded guilty for his involvement in the double murder. Do you believe? Do you believe that these are the only atrocities this hoodlum was involved in? So he went to court and he pleaded guilty. And he will be going back to the court on Wednesday, May 4th, 2022, where he will be sentenced. Let's wait and see if he will be given a slap 
on the wrist. Let's wait and see. Now, in this next incident, it took place at Waterbit in the parish of Trelawney. It took place just last night, Thursday, February 24th, 2022, about 10 p.m. Our information is that a security guard, he was on duty at a club named Club Energy at Waterbit in the parish of Trelawney. We are told that a police party, they descended on the club. From all indications, the security guard on duty was the target of this operation. The police officers, they went straight to the security guard and searched him. The security guard, he had a bag on his back. The bag, it was taken from this security guard. And it is alleged that one 9mm Beretta pistol with the serial number intact, affixed with a magazine containing six rounds of 9mm cartridges, was found inside of this bag. It was then found out or realized that this is an illegal gun. As a result, the security guard, he was taken into police custody. His name is Ramon Lawrence. He's 32 years old and he's of a Trelawney address. So, Ramon Lawrence, he was arrested and charged for the offenses of illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition. So he will be going to the courts shortly to face his judgment. In this next story, a man named Clifton Stewart. He was popularly known as Junior. Now, Junior, he was 42 years old and he lived at a place named Beeston Spring in the parish of Westmoreland. Junior, it is said that he was of an unsound mind and he lived alone. So, Junior, he was last seen alive on or about Tuesday, February 8, 2022. Junior was seen walking in the community. At the time he was seen, we are told that he had flu-like symptoms. Yeah man, persons noticed that. So yesterday, Thursday, February 24th, 2022, about 12 midday or thereabout, someone went to Junior's house. The person who went to Junior's house, he had gotten something to give to Junior. When that man reached Junior's house, Junior was seen lying in his bed in the house in a decomposed state. Junior, he was DEAD. The police were called and Junior's body, it was removed to the morgue. A post-mortem examination will be done on Junior's body to ascertain how he met his demise. If and when that is done and there is anything else to report, we will certainly be updating this story. Now, have you hit on the like button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on the like button. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, remember, hit on the subscribe button as also hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that as soon as we post a new video, you will be notified. We are now almost at 76,000 subscribers. We are growing. Ensure that you grow with us. Now in the final story for today, and this one, <laughs> very, very interesting. You hear all the while me talk about the mayhem continues. We know what is happening, you know. We know what is happening and we are facing the reality. It's not a joy for us to come here on a daily basis and talk about what is happening, but we have to ensure that you are informed. Informing you may save your life. You best believe that. So, on February 24th, 2021, we carried a story on this channel. We told you that a young man named Zion Curtis, he was popularly known as Z-Tech. That is a photograph of Z-Tech on your screen. Z-Tech, he was only 17 years old. Now, at the time we carried this story, we read a WhatsApp message. We are going to read it again because we want you to understand something. This WhatsApp message was sent to us by a relative of Z-Tech. The person said, this is my 17-year-old. I deleted that part because I didn't want to say nephew or cousin or grandson or son. I didn't want anybody to have any idea who this message is coming from. So the person went on to say, 
This little shh. Are you reading? This little mess stopped going to school and took up scamming. He was a menace. They went for him and he died in his sleep from a single bullet to his damn head. We are praying for his brother who is critical after surgery today. Two totally different boys shake my head as the bullet in his back is still lodged. You heard what the relative just said? The relative said, Z-Tech, him stop go to school and him take up scamming. He not only took up scamming, the relative said, Z-Tech was a menace. So here is why the person sent us that message. On Tuesday, February 22, 2021, about 1.30 a.m., early, early morning, we had carried the report that Z-Tech, he and his brother, they were at home sleeping. Z-Tech's brother was 24 years old at the time, and he had some deformities. It is said that strange sounds were heard outside. Some men were seen in the yard. It is said that these men, they shouted, Police! Police! Open up! The persons in the house, they did not open the door. So the men, they kicked in the door and went into the house. Throughout all of this, Z-Tech and his brother, we are told, they were fast asleep. The hoodlums, they used their phones as flashlights, searched the house, till eventually they went into Z-Tech and his brother's room, where they opened gunfire at both Z-Tech and his brother. They were still fast asleep. So Z-Tech, he died in his sleep. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape in the area. The police were called and both Z-Tech and his brother, they were taken to the Noel Holmes Hospital, where Z-Tech, the intended target for these hoodlums, he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E his brother, he survived, but we cannot give you a report as to his condition, whether the bullet was removed from his back or not. So Z-Tech, he passed on. We fast forward now to Wednesday of this week. Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. That is exactly one year and one day since Z-Tech passed. Z-Tech's friends decided on keeping a memorial for him. This memorial, it was being held at Campbell's Hill, the same place where Z-Tech was shot and killed and where he lived. Now, Campbell's Hill is in the Lances Bay area in the parish of Hanover. At this memorial, we are told that several persons were in attendance. A lot of the persons, we are told, are from a certain community in Montego Bay, in the parish of St. James. Now, as we all know, there's a lot of conflicts taking place in Montego Bay. This conflict, it involved men aligned to different gangs. So the memorial, it was now over, minutes after 11 p.m., and persons were heading home. We are told that a number of vehicles were traveling along the road when a Toyota Foxy it stopped along the Lances Bay main road to pick up someone. It is said that when this Toyota Foxy stopped to pick up the person, a Toyota Axio motor car that was traveling behind the Toyota Foxy, it drove up beside the Toyota Foxy and hoodlums in the Axio, they opened gunfire in the Foxy. The Axio, it then sped away. Two of the men who were in the Toyota Foxy, they were hit. One of the men who was hit is in his late 20s and he's from a Montego Bay address. He received gunshot wounds to one of his shoulders and his hip. The other man who was shot, he was the driver for the vehicle. He is 21 years old. Now, this man is also of a Montego Bay address. This man, he has been identified as Sudin Hilton's brother. Have you heard the name Sudin Hilton before? If you haven't, you can either go on Google, search for it, or even here on YouTube, just type in Sudin Hilton. S-U-D-E-E-N-H-Y-L-T-O-N. And you will hear who Sudin Hilton is. We carried story about her. Sir P from Politics Watch carried story about her. And the Spot News Media also carried stories about her. So there's a lot to learn about Sudin Hilton. 
she's now on bail for the offense of murder. So, so doing Hilton's brother, he received gunshot wounds to his lower back. So doing Hilton's brother and the other man, they were rushed to the Noel Holmes Hospital. But based on the nature of their injuries, they had to be rushed to a major medical facility. <laughs> With all that has been happening, do you think this I got done now? Because these persons who were attacked, they know where this attack is coming from. Yeah man, them know. So that is why I keep saying to you, the mayhem continues. Blessed love everybody.